Hello and welcome to part two of the Grand Old Bookstore uh, build. This part will be the insides because in the last video we did the outside. Um, yeah, so I'm just touching up a few things outside right now. Um, again, if you don't remember from last time, this uh, particular lot is 132000 and it's on the lot that's next to the pet clinic or the vet clinic in Brindleton. So that's a thing. Um, we're just painting the walls, getting the flooring in and everything. Um, I wanted to kind of keep the outside and the inside a little bit cohesive. So I brought in the wood that I used on the outside and the brick that I used on the outside, um, at least for this bottom floor. Um, I was looking for bookshelves and seeing which ones looked best. Um, I wanted bookshelves that weren't going to be massive and take up too much space, but that also kind of felt old and antique-y almost. But that also kind of seemed like they could be built-ins, and that's why I ended up going with the one that I have against the wall there, because they're thin and stuff. I did put some in front of that window. Um, I left the window on the outside because I figured it, the window still looked good on the outside and what's the harm in covering up that window on the inside? It's not like half of it was covered or something like that. Like it was completely covered by the bookshelves. You're always welcome to take the window out if it bugs you. I'm placing these little stands for like a book display. Um, they're like best sellers or whatever. And then I have these. I did use thicker bookshelves on this side because I wasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I wasn't going to have the, um, the shelves sticking out on the one, like I do on the back side. Uh, so I was able to have it a little bit more thick. The furniture in here isn't super matchy matchy. Um, one thing I did try to do is do a lot of the green fabrics and kind of more older looking furniture like furniture they might have found at an antique store or at a thrift store or you know maybe a, an estate sale or something like that because they probably go to estate sales when they're looking for rare books to sell like that kind of thing so I figured that could be kind of the narrative around the decor um, choices, if you will. Um, yeah. I really like this um, build because I feel like it's a nice place because I do have, I put a kids section upstairs and like a little cafe so it kind of has a lot of things to offer. It has a lot of things going for it. And um, I, I just really like it because I feel like if you are going to use it for, say, storytelling or something like that, like, there's a lot of little private areas where, like, your sims can kind of, like, chit-chat, like, in between the book uh, shelves or book stacks, whatever you want to call them, like, and things like that. Um, this could also be a place, like, if you're telling a story of, like, your sim as like a vampire and they're learning about vampiric lore or something like they can come here and look at the books or like buy some books and like you could even make a vampire like the shop owner and he owns this bookstore as a way to like feed on people like there's so many different options you could do with a bookstore like this because while the vibe is a little bit more antique or old and like musty in a way, it's still kind of fresh and like, it's just a good setting because a lot can happen in this one setting. Like, and you can, like I said, you can bring kids here cause there's the kids section upstairs. You can bring, um, there's, I also put a guitar upstairs. So that way, if you want, you can hire someone to play guitar or something like that. Um, I also have it, um, I made a family that, that bought the store, um, and I made them specifically with this in mind that they, um, have, like, their granddaughter that they're raising, they're an elderly couple, and so they kind of added 
the little kids section in upstairs is kind of like an afterthought after like they found out they were having a granddaughter and and everything so like there's just limitless possibilities with a build like this and so you can really kind of get into it um depending on what you're doing i'm adding like clutter and stuff right now um i have basically all the hard furniture pieces where i want them and right now i'm just kind of working on cluttering it up with odds and ends i when i played this because i played it briefly um before i uploaded it to the gallery i put a bunch of stuff for sale so I put like the statues for sale and the stuff I put on the walls for sale so like it's not necessarily just solely a bookstore like where I did like put books for sale I also put like the furniture for sale and like other things like that so it does kind of have that vibe like they also antique and have the antiques at, you know or they go to estate sales and they buy all the different stuff and put it for sale in the in the store and kind of talk about it all to people and I put little like I upsize those crates that have stuff in them over there so that way it looked like that's kind of like their stocking boxes and, and then I am putting the books here as clutter um Doo, doo, doo. Um, you see the red shelf. Um, I don't care to be overly repetitive, but there's chance that um, you haven't seen this. But I'm assuming that if you've, if you're watching this speed build right now, it's because you've fallen down a hole of speed builds, and you've probably seen people who. Are more popular than me so I'm, I'm assuming you've seen someone with the red shelf who uses it in the same way which is to clutter and to be able to raise things to an appropriate height for cluttering and to be able to arrange things in a better way but yeah like I said I did play this retail store and I put a lot of things for sale and a lot of things sold just fine um, it is a pretty big store um, so if you're one shopkeeper it is a little bit hectic but I hired an employee and that was kind of helpful I'm just putting these little book displays on this table because I figure this is like where the new books that they bought you know or that they're selling are coming in and going kind of just trying to do a variety of them I honestly I wanted it to be even more cluttered <laughs> like I had this vision in my head of like just having everything like stacked and like really musty looking and just over the top like just stuff piling high and I was just kind of like at one point I was just like first of all it's a huge place I should have probably done a lot of a smaller build if I wanted as much clutter as I do like I still want more clutter but I figure I can do an itty bitty shop um later on I actually have some plans to do smaller shops because I really like making the retail store so I think I might try my hand at a couple more uh, for different things and different items um, but I like this I just like the idea of this one and one thing that I thought was like just cool like I said is that like I set that suit of armor for sale I set like the pots of flowers for sale and toys upstairs in the kids section for sale and a big like some paintings on the wall etc and that was kind of like the stuff that really sold so 
you can obviously just bring in other stuff and mark it for sale and it ends up being really cool I really like that they had that model of Brindleton um, over there you can kind of see it where I'm skirting around here but I just really like that it was there because they're in Brindleton and it's kind of like a little a little conversation piece or even just like a little thing in there to get people to start browsing and to like go further into the store and I wanted to have a lot of little seating options and it worked out really well because when I was test playing it like my sins definitely gravitated towards the areas with the seating and they just kind of congregated there there was at one point like you know eight different sims in like each corner you know I was putting those crates under the stairs because I figure that could be shipment that they get in and they just kind of like stack it back there and then whenever they sell stuff they can like pull stuff out of the crates and like refill the empty spaces or something it was just this build is definitely a lot of clutter I put the little Victorian doll up there and I forgot about her and left her floating in midair and I didn't realize it until much later and so um I did pull her out of the build before I uploaded it to the gallery though but I if you notice that I forgot about her um, I know I, I am aware that I forgot about her and I took her out but yeah she's just floating there I think she gets she gets a little lost among the patterns of the books and stuff and I didn't have an exact place where I wanted her when I pulled her out of the um, catalog I just was I was like, oh, she's cute. She would be, she's something they could sell. And then I just spaced on her. I was like, oops. But we're getting close to the end of the first floor. Um, I put these rugs out there. And then I saw that, like, cats and dogs can't specifically be welcome to retail shops. So then I deleted them. And, uh, but I did make it so that way um, strays hang out, like stray cats hang out on the lot. And so you could switch it to dogs or you could turn that off entirely. But I thought it would be cute because I always have wanted to go to a bookstore that has just like a cat chilling or something. Or like it's always fun when you go to a place and they have a dog or a cat there and you're just like, ooh. So, yeah. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm like checking all the rugs to see which ones like tell dogs to come hang out. Right now I'm just looking for different art pieces that I think should go on the wall. I put that one up there and then I quickly realized that I didn't like, um, I know it felt just too modern for the space. Um, and it wasn't in a frame and I, so I just kind of, I ended up taking it down and then putting up a different one that has a more, a frame that seems more appropriate the gargoyle in the corner by the cash register his wings clip through the wall and you can see them on the outside in the front um I noticed that like while I was playing and I was gonna like move him and everything but I like him where he is and so I figure um you can probably just put like vines on the wall to like camouflage where his wings crop like pop out or something but it's not too like in your face like what the heck's going on so i figure it's easily camouflaged or you can just take the guard away out entirely depending on what your preference is and then doing the upstairs putting those lights i was going to keep the disc lights throughout when i first started this but then i realized that it would be better to have these like chandeliers because of their um old worldy feel and then the decor the excuse me the decoration for the upstairs area um I wanted it to have again a more mature vibe a more older vibe um so I went with like a patterned carpet and I really like the patterned carpet, but it's so hard to like get a wall that goes with it that doesn't feel like over the top. But if you 
ever look at like old Victorian homes or just old homes in general, you'll notice that it, like 90% of the time people had these just gaudy as all hell carpets and then they had equally as gaudy wallpaper and I kind of enjoy that charm of just like let's put every print possible in this one place and so like I figure that the wainscoting on the walls that I chose with the the wood molding kind of on the upper half of the wall like, I feel like it's not too gaudy of a print that clashes with the floor, but it is just enough, like, of a print to be, like, there's a lot going on here. But it's not, like, it doesn't make you want to gouge out your eyeballs. At least, I don't think. But obviously, you're more than welcome to change it if you're not a fan of it. I've never used these little baking displays or anything before. I set them up to what I thought was kind of aesthetically pleasing, um, now that I'm looking at it though, I would have arranged it a little differently. Like I probably would have taken out that counter with the cash register and just placed the, the little glass display up front and then put the little, um, warming rack and the little vending machine thingy in the back. And, um, yeah. And I'm making bathrooms right now because I figured that they would be needed on this lot because you're probably spending quite a bit of time here if you come. I just made two quick bathrooms. Um, just identical, just mirrors of each other essentially. Um, I was trying to find a mirror that went well, but they all either lined up weird with the little print on top of that wallpaper or they just looked weird so I just went with one that completely was out of the box if you will now I'm setting up the little kids corner um, I wanted it to be like a super fun little corner with you know a place for them to play and then also there's like a little sitting area adjacent to this area so like parents can sit there to keep an eye on the kids or you know something like that and then this is also the area that I put like the guitar in and I put a little um record player phonograph thing on a table as well so that way they can dance and stuff and I had my shop owners with their little granddaughter toddler upstairs here dancing and it was really cute she made a mess on the floor in the middle of the kids section and I thought that I would be able to get rid of it in build mode and no such luck so I actually had to I had to go into my game wake up my shop owner have him go down clean up the patch and then leave and then I was able to because and then I was able to um get rid of it and then I uploaded it but like yeah I had this giant mess on the floor where the little girl left it I'm just adding more book displays to these shelves I sized up these little um I don't know what they're called I guess they're like little nesting cubes or something is what they're called but are nesting blocks but I just put a couple toys in there because I figured it was cute and some like kitty I figure the little girl maybe did some of the artwork or maybe like some of their customers are like dropping off artwork their kids do you know like hey they wanted to make you some art and so then they hang them in the bookstore and that'd be kind of cool so like, especially because I figure that you know they're local they live here they own the shop so gives it more of a fun story feel But yeah, I put all these toys here and I set them all for sale and people were buying them. So that's also like they bought the giraffe, they bought a chair, they bought like a couple different things. So it made it pretty cool. They bought that green dinosaur or that green dragon that I put there. I'm putting little toys inside the cubes, which I first saw Miss Griffey do that. I'm sure plenty of people have done it, but that's where I saw it first. 
um, and I've been a speed build watcher for a good, you know, month now. And now I'm just setting these tables out on the rooftop area where you can kind of chill and either eat something you got from the little cafe. I also add one of the little coffee carts downstairs in the front um, so you can pay someone to come serve coffee. I also add a countertop with a coffee maker in as well. But yeah, if you like this, feel free to subscribe. Um, I don't have many video up, videos up right now, but I do plan on making more. So keep an eye out and thank you again for watching. Now enjoy some screenshots. Thanks.